Hello, beautiful creative people. Welcome to howtoartjournal.com. I'm your creative tour guide and fellow art journal lover, Kyla Givehand. Today, I chat with T.R. Smith about her creative journey and the power of the art journal. T.R. Smith, aka Classy Girl, is a mixed media and art journal artist and instructor. She infuses happiness, confidence, and creativity into her art and life. TR helps women embrace the artist within through lessons infused with happiness, confidence, and creativity. She empowers them to experience and express their art more freely. TR has several online classes in art journaling and mixed media for all levels and all stages of the art journey. She even has a free art journaling class called Express Yourself. I've had the pleasure of meeting TR in person and going art supply shopping with her, and she's a joy to be around. She brings a lovely energy to every situation. Trust me, you can't help but have fun when you're with her. She's on a mission to touch one million hearts in a powerful and significant way. Her tagline, be bad, be bold, be you. You can learn more about TR uh, on her website at trsmith.com. Thanks so much for joining us. All right, TR, welcome. Thank you so much for joining me. I think I've been trying to um, get an interview with you for quite some time now. We tried it once, didn't quite go. Technology didn't want to be you know, nice to us, so here we are again. And I think this is actually even a better time for us to do it because we're 2016, we just started a new year. You've launched some amazing things for your people. Um, so I feel like this is, you know, the universe knows what we need to do. And I feel like this is the perfect time for us to be talking. So thank you and welcome. Thank you. Yeah. So we can, we're just going to jump right in. Um, I want to, I love to ask people first because this is for howtoartjournal.com and people coming here at all levels. I always like to kind of ground the conversation in what brought you to art journaling? So if you want to share a little bit of your sort of story and how you got became an art journal, that would be awesome. Well, I've always been artistic ever since I was a kid. Yeah. Um, and like most people, there was probably some type of art journaling uh, based creativity because I used to doodle a lot and write poetry and color on paper um, a lot. Mm -hmm. However, what I truly found outside of art journaling was scrapbooking. Mm. So I became a very avid scrapbooker and scrapbooking, of course, you know, is telling your story with words and photos. Mm -hmm. And for me, it became a natural transition to go to art journaling when I decided that I needed to pick back up with my art and my love of art and my love of creating and in a different way mm -hmm. and uh, kind of going a little bit away from the photo part, right. but expressing myself and expressing my feelings in a different way. Yeah, yeah. No, I love that. It went from scrapbooking. I don't think I've ever heard anybody describe scrapbooking that way, that it's telling your story through words and images. I tried scrapbooking once before and felt completely like a fish out of water. I had no idea what I was doing, where to start. There were so many supplies and I was like, I don't even know. So I picked a bunch of things, random, probably disconnected, disjointed things and tried to put pages together and they were god awful okay they were really really bad <laughs> and i know we like oh there's no mistakes artistic right, right. but i'm telling you they were bad. <laughs> they were pretty bad um and i think it's because i didn't have i didn't have that ex explanation uh mm -hmm. of how what scrapbooking could be um yes. and i think i had just seen you know what people were doing and i was like oh that's so beautiful i love that and then I tried to recreate it and it was nothing close to that. And so I kind of got discouraged and I ended up not um, following through on scrapbooking after buying all those supplies. Um, so I love to hear you say how it was just sort of a normal sort of evolution for you. It went from, you know, you telling your story through patterned papers and things that already exist to now you do these beautiful pages that most of your stuff is either hand drawn or you know, you use paint to create the images as opposed to going and buying a pre-done thing 
you are now the one creating both the words and the images. And I think that's, it's, there's power in that for sure. Yes. Yeah. So in your, uh, in your sort of scrapbooking world coming from there, um, what would you say was the, I don't know if hardest is the right word, but the most challenging part of your transition from scrapbooking to art journaling? I guess it's letting go of the thought that you need to use what you have, which is totally not something I teach people. I say to use what you have. Yeah. But in this instance, I felt that I had gathered all of this scrapbooking stuff. So mm -hmm. I needed to use stamps. Mm -hmm. I needed to use pattern paper. Mm -hmm. And I needed to, at some point, use a photo. And that's not true. Right. Um, for me, with art journaling, it's more about me expressing myself through my own personal art mm -hmm. and not through the art necessarily of other people, meaning a stamp or a piece of pattern paper. Mm -hmm. So being able to let go and say, this bundle of supplies I have is for scrapbooking. If I choose to put it in my art journal, that's fine, but it is not necessary. I can doodle, I can paint, I can scribble, I can use ink, I can use whatever it is that I want to express myself. And I, I had to lose that need to use those particular supplies in my um, art journals. Yeah, no, that, I could see how that would definitely be a challenge. Because even I, I have a lot of stuff held over from my whole, I'm going to be a scrapbooker. And I like literally went in the store, went gangbusters and bought like on. <laughs> Like, I won't even tell you how much money I spent buying everything I thought I needed. <laughs> and now I still look back and we're talking easily 10, 12 years, maybe even 15 years ago this was. Um, I still have papers from, from then, wow. right? Wow. So, because I never scrapbooked and then I was like, I don't know what to do with them, but I can't throw them away. I paid for them. They're so pretty, right? So I still, every now and then I'll go in that stash and, you know, rip a piece or do something with it. but. Yeah, I could see how that would be a transition for somebody who's like built up a stash of stuff. Yes. Um, yes. Yeah. So do you still scrapbook? I do. It is not nearly as much as I used to. Um, for about a year, I actually did not scrapbook. Oh, wow. But I recently came back to scrapbooking because my memories are very important as well. Mm -hmm. um, someday my mind not right. <laughs> Exactly. But my books will. Right, right. You can always go back and say, oh, I guess I did go there and do that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, that's kind of how I think about art journaling. It is like a, a documenting of my life just in a different, you know, in a different medium. But yeah. I do try to document moments or not even like specific nitty gritty details, but like the S capture the essence of a moment of, or the essence of a day or a month or what I was feeling or dealing with. Right. Um, which I think is the beauty of art journaling is it doesn't have to be so overt. Like here's a picture, me, my husband at the waterfall, right. It can be, it can, we, I can capture the essence of what it felt like to be at the waterfall. You know what I mean? But that overt picture is fun to look at 30 years from now. <laughs> it is. You're right. It is. Especially if, who knows in 30 years what I'm going to be looking like. I can go back and say, oh, there was me 30 years. Exactly. Yeah. No, you're right for sure. So listen, I want to, um, I want to talk a little bit about your creative practice. Like what, what does your creative practice look like right now? Like how often do you art journal? Um, when you, do you intentionally say, okay, I'm about to go to my table and art journal. Like how, what does your creative process look like? Okay. So I do create somewhat with intention, mm -hmm. meaning I set aside the time. My afternoons are for art mm -hmm. and that could be for art journaling. Um, sometimes it is very, guided meaning i've decided i'm going to paint a ballerina and <laughs> that is what i'm gonna do <laughs> right right because i like to practice i like to create things i love to do canvases and all kinds of different things right um and then there are the days where 
you just want to create emotionally. Mm -hmm. And I just allow myself that space. Yeah. So on the day that I am creating a ballerina, I might also just open my book and art journal. It really just depends on my mood. I do try to let my mood guide me, mm -hmm. but I do create with intention as well. Yeah. So I probably create more with intention than I do just spur of the moment. Yeah. I'm feeling happy. I'm feeling sad. I'm feeling this. I think as I create, even if I decide that I'm creating a girl or, or a bird or a ballerina, mm -hmm. my mood comes through my art no matter what. Yeah. Yeah. Because it comes through in my choice of colors and if I decide to add a word in my choice of words. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's, let's t sort of along the same lines because I know that really and truly in the grand scheme of it, you are a mixed media artist. So you use a lot of different medium. You're not just working in an art journal. Like you said, sometimes you're doing a canvas or a board or some other mixed media style project, a canvas bag, right? Whatever it is. How much of the art journaling fuels the other work, like the canvas work and the other stuff that you do, or is it the other way around? No, I would think the art journal fuels the canvas mm -hmm. okay. because I typically create in my art journals first. Okay. Um, every so often, yes, I will be like, I am going, like today, honestly, I am working on a ballerina. Mm hmm I was going to say there is no ballerina in my art journal, but there is a dancing girl. Ah, uh, okay. So there is always, typically, it comes in the art journal, and I love it. Mm -hmm. I love the process, and I think it would make a great canvas. It's never a duplicate, right. but it has inspired the other work of art. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, so then let's talk a little bit because the ballerina has come up a couple of times. And I think one of the things that I admire most about your work is the, the number of, not even the number, but the how often uh, women show up in your work. Um, and I love that they're brown women because we don't see that a lot in the art journaling mixed media community. Not a lot of people are painting brown faces mm -hmm. and showing, right? So, Talk a little bit about when that started for you. Like when did the women start to show up in your work and sort of the conscious decision? Cause I know you've got angels that you do and you have um, like, we can see them back there behind you. Like the women who's just like half their faces or um, women standing together, like uh, sisterhood, that kind of thing. When did, when did that start to show up in your work? I think that's, probably the first thing that showed up in my work. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, growing up, although my mother probably did not intend this, she gave me books about black queens, mm. about successful black women, mm. stories of black people, black inventors. So I was infused with positive images of women. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that, to me, has always been a part of my existence. Mm -hmm. uh, her, my mother, you know, everything in my childhood and that my mother went through, if she told her story, it would be littered with lots of horrible details. <laughs> <laughs> However, the mother that I knew was wonderful. She was there, and that I still know. She's still here. Right. So, but the woman I grew up with, shall I say. Yeah. You know, she took care of her kids. She went to work. Our father died when I was only six years old. Mm. So she was a single parent then, yeah. uh, raising children. So I got to see a woman in that capacity, and we lived well. We lived nicely. I was not hungry. I never longed for anything. Mm -hmm. um, so again, I got to see this woman who worked for her family, who uh, encouraged and pushed us, who I loved and admired. You know, she was fun. She played. She came outside and played double dutch with us and ran mm -hmm. races with us. She cooked. She cleaned. You know, you know yes. what mothers do. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. So I think that positive images of black woman, women, whether they were in the struggle and fought to be free or mm -hmm 
fought to be well respected mm -hmm. or fought to be loved or fought for their children. I know that history. I live that history. Um, and in that history, you know, her sharing all of those positive images through books, that that's what I know. Yeah, it kind of seeped inside of your soul. That's yeah. inside of me. Yeah. That's what I feel. That's what I live. Yeah. No, that's beautiful. Okay. I mean, that that's, uh, I don't think I could have scripted a better answer. That's because I think it speaks to what art journaling can do for us, right? It can tap into the stuff that is deep in our subconscious that we may not even know is there. Like you're able to pinpoint, right? My mother gave me these books. They had these images. But for some people, uh, stuff comes out in their art journals or in their paintings or whatever they're working on artistically, and they may not be able to make that connection just yet. But I, I would venture to say that most of us, if we really truly give over to the creative process, the stuff that's buried deep, whether it's the good and the bad, right, is going to surface at some point. So, um, all right. So let's talk a little bit about um, who inspires you. Like what kind of art inspires you or what things inspire your art? Well, now that one's a, that, that I'm so all over the place. <laughs> That's fine. Um, I mean, I think that's beautiful for people to hear. Like, what? Because I, I don't think we get inspiration from one single source. Uh -huh. um, yeah. So I'm just curious, where? What are your inspiration sources? Yeah, I, I'm. I am literally all over the place, and you can probably see it in my art because I do so many different things. Right. Um. So absolutely, positively, I am inspired by Black women. Mm -hmm. Um. Their images whether in magazines or on TV or whatever, right. um, that definitely inspires my art. Mm -hmm. um, beauty, as in, and I know that's subjective, but the things that I'm drawn to most often are brown women mm -hmm. and flowers. Yeah. and dragonflies <laughs> yes i was gonna say don't forget the drag because dragonflies are a big part of of your work and your your logo your branding yeah yes yes so those things you will will appear in color um so when i think about finding uh, inspiration mm -hmm. i'm just probably like most people who are going to see this interview you know, you're online, so you find artists that you like, you see art that you like, mm -hmm. you see photos. A lot of my art is inspired by photography mm -hmm. because I've also, I also, I don't mind being inspired by other people's art, and I am, but I don't like the idea of too much of that inspiration coming from the art, so then it translates into their work, so to speak, right. on my right. canvas. Right. Um, so a lot of it is photography. A lot of it is actually photos from my own stock of photos. Mm -hmm. um, I think in my art, and this is just recent, that when I create, I am creating one, the woman that I think I am and the woman that I want to be. Mm. Wow. And I, I really think so because mm -hmm. when I look at my art and I think about the lips, I create lips that I think are very similar to my lips. Right. I did not do that intentionally saying I'm going to create my own lips. Right. I use my skin tone quite often. Again, yeah. not intentionally. Right. Um, but I create big hair mm -hmm. and I want big hair. <laughs> <laughs> So, Yet you keep cutting your hair short. Because I love my short hair. Me too. Me too. <laughs> I, I'm going to just get a big Afro wig, I swear. Right, right. I'm telling you, I, I follow women on Instagram who are like, have these beautiful, natural, big, and I'm like, oh, I could, oh, I would love to have that. But then I'm like, okay, it's time for me to get my hair cut. It's getting too yeah. long. Yeah. This, this feels really long to me. I'm like, oh, I need, it's time. Right? Please. So yeah, no, I can relate to that for sure. Yeah. Yeah, so I think that that's part of the inspiration, loving yourself, loving me, mm -hmm. and loving into existence that lay, that woman I want to be. Yeah. 
Um, and and I, I really think that's it. Just inspiration. I can find inspiration anywhere. Yeah. I could literally go downstairs and look at a piece of clothing or my couch and remember what I love about it and think I love that pattern or color. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna use it. So yeah. yeah, I'm I'm all over the place. Yeah, no, that's I think that's actually good because people sometimes creatives when we get in a, a lull, right? Because we all have those moments where we're in a lull creatively. We wait to be inspired mm -hmm. um, instead of saying, you know what? Let me just find inspiration around me, right? Because you can. I mean, you can look out your window. You can look at your couch. You can go pick up a piece of clothing, your favorite shirt, your favorite scarf, right? There's always inspiration waiting for us. We, but sometimes we sit and wait for inspiration to come. Um, so I think it's really, yeah, I think what you're sharing is really important because really inspiration is, it, it kind of is everywhere all, all around us. So, of course, I like to, to know, you know, your favorite art supplies. So we're going to go there next. Um, talk a little bit, and I, and I have to preface this question and say to those of you listening, TR has totally got me addicted to one of the most expensive art supplies on the market. <laughs> and I'll show them because she's probably going to show them too. She probably has hers. Um, but thanks to... Thanks to TR, I am now pretty much addicted to these Derwent ink tents. So I have you to thank for this very expensive habit. And I even was looking at this and like, okay, this one has 12. Is there a set with more than 12? Am I missing out somehow? So <laughs> I hope there isn't. I haven't looked to see. I really hope there isn't. Um, but share with us what some of your favorite art supplies are. Okay, so Kyla absolutely probably picked one of my number ones. It may, it may be my number one or it may be my number two. Uh -oh. And that is, yeah, because I'm falling in love with something else. Uh -oh. um, but ink tints are, I think, my number one. Number one or two, I can't decide. And I'm going to show you my ten of ink tints. Okay. I, I think. Yes. All right, sorry about that. No worries. So here's my ten of ink tents. Oh no! Seventy-two. There are more than twelve. Oh my gosh! See what, now, people, let me tell you. That's the baby package. <laughs> See what she just did? Okay, so now what will I be doing this weekend on a hunt? For 72 ink tents blocks. Thank you very much. And you might want to try Amazon. <laughs> okay, I will. I, I will got mine. I, I, if I'm going to be honest with you, I was lucky though because mine were on sale on Amazon. And like you said, they are very expensive. Yeah. 72 literally probably would cost you a hundred and something bucks. <sighs> However, I got them for $35. <laughs> Whoa on Amazon. You don't always see that deal, but you will see them definitely cheaper than at the store. Yeah. Okay. I'll keep that in mind. 72. My mind is blown. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So my other favorite thing that I'm falling in love with right at this moment is another expensive. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> These golden oh. high heels. The high flow, yes. Oh they're... my God. Yeah. The color is ridiculously yeah. yummy. Yes. And they are very versatile because you can paint with them. You can put them in a refillable marker and write with them. You can drip them. You can drip them and spray them with water and they just spread magnificently. <laughs> you can drip them on top of one another and it creates amazing fun patterns. Oh my God. I love it. I love it. I love it. Listen, y'all. Okay. So those of you listening, I'm going to put a link below for you. I have a video that I did with high flow and be warned. It's what she just said is so true. They're really awesome. They can do a lot of things. They're a little pricey. So start tucking away a little money on the side so you can get you some. Um, is that set you have eight? Is that a set of eight? It's a set of 10. 10. Okay. And I will tell you what are the things that you can do because I saw these at Michael's. Mm -hmm. So get your 40% off coupon. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Those of you that are uh, watching, you may not be familiar with the whole 40% coupon thing. Joann's in the U.S., Michael's in the U.S., they both have 40% off coupons that come out 
pretty regularly. I mean, I, I feel like there's always one. You're either one is almost about to expire or a new one's coming. Like there's always one floating out there. So um, definitely pay attention to those 40% off coupons. Um, yes. Yeah. So, th so this stuff can become affordable. All right. What else? What else? Anything else? <laughs> That is a sneaky laugh. That's a sneaky, sneaky laugh. <laughs> because that's what I have at arm's reach. Right, right. Um, golden acrylics. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love acrylics. So that definitely is high on my list. I'm going to say those two are my most used go to love. Um, supplies okay. and yeah I'm gonna stick with that yeah yeah no that's I mean that's plenty I mean most people right now you just you know that's that's almost two hundred dollars so you, you <laughs> so you're good right go get those two supplies um and then I want you so the reason TR has got me sort of addicted to these things is I took a class with her um, and she'll talk about the class in a second here. And she uses Ink Tense as like one of the very first assignments or exercises, tutorials in the class. And I was just like, I don't need that. I'm going to use watercolor. It'll be fine. And I did it with watercolor. And I was like, huh, her stuff is really vibrant. It's really like super rich and juicy looking. I was like, all right, I, I have, I've had these Ink Tense for a while, but I just was like, eh. But she gave me a new way to use them. And so, TR, talk a little bit about uh, your classes that you have right now. Start with the splotch class because I think that's like so it's such an accessible class. No matter what level a person is, they can they can take, start that class like today and learn something and almost be like hit the ground running with their creativity, their art, that kind of thing. So tell us um, about all the courses that you have. I know you got some collaborative things coming up. So share with us how we can, you know, take classes from you. Okay, so as I'm talking, I know I'm looking down. I'm trying to flip through my book and see if I can find some splotch art that I've done. Mm -hmm. Oh, I have so my I can share a picture. I'll show my one. Mine is nothing like hers, y'all, but I'll, sh I'll show my one little page. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so splotch art is a art... Um, a way of creating art that I have played with and developed mm -hmm. into my own way of creating. Mm -hmm. um, basically, I, it's called Splatter, Splotch, and Splash is the name of the workshop. Mm -hmm. And it is designed to teach the student how to create beautiful art in a very free and flowing way. Mm -hmm. um, like Kyla said, it is designed so that you can hit the ground running. Mm -hmm. Literally, you can take the class, you can create some splotch art, you can create splotch flowers immediately. Yeah. It is a very free and loose way to make beautiful art. Mm -hmm. So here is one of my pages. Mm, nice. Let me, uh, let me switch our view so people can have you in sort of the spotlight. We can see you really big, maybe. Let's see if it'll let me do that. Okay, go for it. So there you can see my page. Mm -hmm. That is splotch art. Those are splotch flowers. Nice. I don't only do flowers in that class. However, I do teach uh, how to do a splotch face. I mm -hmm. teach how to work on a canvas, how to work on a canvas bag. Mm -hmm. Bird. There are so many things you can actually create with splotch art. Yeah. I cover a few of them. In the workshop, there's more. <laughs> <laughs> so does that mean there's going to be a part two of the class? Is that what you're saying? There will be a part two. Because yes. I, haven't, I haven't even gotten to the, um, I, I watched the exercise with the bird and the flowers, but I haven't gotten to the face. I think I'm a little hesitant because I'm like, a face? Ah! Um, but that's going to be my next. I'm not going to let that stop me. I am going to go do the lesson with the face. So. Yes, please. <laughs> yes. So there will be a part two in the future. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. And what um, else? Tell us about, uh, speaking of faces, tell us about your face class that I be I was begging for for like a year. Like, is that class coming? When is it coming? When are you going to do it? 
Okay, so all about that face is my current face class. Mm -hmm. And it really is intended to teach people a variety of ways to make faces, including how to blend brown skin tones. Mm -hmm. nice. um, what I, what, basically I take people on a face making journey, mm -hmm. the same journey basically that I went on. Oh, nice. Because when I first started making faces, I didn't love it. Mm. Um, and I didn't love making open eyes and I didn't like this cer certain uh, part of the face and I had to learn <laughs> to blend my skin tones. Mm -hmm. So I found other ways to create faces and to get used to practicing making faces until I got to a point where I was more comfortable with the eyes open, right. more comfortable with blending the skin tones. So I teach people six ways to create faces. So it's a wonderful, wonderful workshop mm. that is great for all levels because mm. it's gonna teach you something different. And the lessons also like swatch art are designed to help you get in there, start practicing and creating faces right away. Nice. Um, the people that have taken the workshop or that are currently in the workshop are enjoying themselves. They're cranking out faces. It's an amazing experience. I'm very, very happy with how it's going. And I'm very, very happy to be able to share this face making journey with people because so many people get intimidated when it comes to creating faces. But this is a wonderful way that eases people into it and yeah. helps them build their practice. Yeah. So, you know, TR, is that the splotch class right now is self-study. People can just come whenever, start. They don't have, there's not a specific start and end date. They can start tomorrow, today, if they want to, right? Is that the same for the faces class? Well, it's the fa we are currently in the session, like I am doing it with people. Mm -hmm. But yeah, if you join now, you can start at the beginning. So it's pretty self-paced and just oh. keep going through the lessons. And you'll just end up with the, the last couple of lessons with me. Okay. And, and of course, you can just sign up at any time and go through the lessons at your own pace. Okay. And just to be clear, for those of you watching the video, depending on when you come to the video, this is January 26, 2016. So when we say the class is in session now, it may, if you watch this in March or April, the class may no longer be in session. So we just want to clarify for you when put, place you in time. So you know where, what we're, what we're talking about. Thank you. All right. So we've got the splotch, the splotch class, the faces class. What else do you have for us? We have the one badass art journal. Woo woo! I'm yeah. Excited. yeah. <laughs> I'm excited about that. I'm very excited about that one. Yeah. And I'm very excited that Kyla is actually one of the instructors, one of the badass instructors. <laughs> the yeah. Um, this workshop is really, really designed to ignite. Uh, your inner badass, whoever you are. It's designed to bring you cool techniques, mm -hmm. uh, help build your confidence, help you try different things, mm -hmm. uh, help you tap into that badass artist within and allow you to practice and play and create and be happy and have fun mm -hmm. and just enjoy the whole process of mixed media art yeah. and, and what you have uh, and what you want to release and what you want to share with the world. Yeah, awesome. No, I'm, I am so honored and thrilled to be teaching in this class. It's very, um, the, the teachers that you've brought together, it's like an amazing list of badass instructors. And I'm yeah. so, yeah, I'm just honored to be a part of it. So thank you so much for inviting me because it's, um, I think sometimes we, the word badass because it you know it's like a little swear word um, <laughs> to some people but i think you you don't really if you tell, call somebody a badass you're not usually saying it in a negative way you're almost like saying to them ah, you're a badass like it's almost like a compliment to right them, right so it's not it's not like cursing somebody out it's more like i need a word that can give the emphasis that I really mean here. So I'm, I'm excited about being a badass. Yeah. Uh, so, okay. So there, I feel like there's one more you're leaving out. 
Okay, here's it. Can people still take the gratitude class, the gratitude journal? The gratitude journal is closed, okay. but I will probably reopen gratitude mm -hmm. journal because it's the gratitude junk journal mm -hmm. because people should practice gratitude all year long. Yes. So it is a great practice and it is going to, it will, be, when I open it, it too will be self study. Nice. Um, so people can come in and, and learn how to create a beautiful junk journal and learn to create the pages within. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I also want to mention uh, the badass art journal, which starts February 1st for those people like Kyla just said, you know, in time, that one is going to be taught by there are 14 badass instructors and there are 16 badass art journal lessons with two bonus lessons. Mm -hmm. to learn to make a badass art journal, the book that will hold your art, which is taught by, I'm going to say it one more time, <laughs> Kyla Gibhan. <laughs> Come learn, make learn to make a, a badass art journal for sure. Yes. Yeah. Um, and then there'll be one more lesson uh, to with me to create a badass cover. Yeah. So I just wanted to make sure that you uh, that I shared all that it is. Mm -hmm. We will be in session starting February first live with the instructors. Yeah. Afterwards, it does become self study. You come in and you go at your own pace. Right. Um. Right. And I guess I should mention, because you said, isn't there something I'm miss missing? Mm -hmm. And I should mention my angel series. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, wait, before you, before you move past the badass, I just want to say um, to my very loyal and amazing YouTube community um, and my blog community, I'm giving away a seat in the badass class. All right, so make sure that you leave a comment below. Um, maybe tell us what your favorite art supply is or... Tell us what makes you badass, right? That would be awesome. What makes you badass? And uh, I'll pick some. I'll pick a winner before February first or on February first. I'll probably pick it the day of the day the class starts. All right. So sit tight, put your comment below so you can um, join us for that for that class. Okay. Now tell us about the angels. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for okay, that. Wait, wait, um, badass to angels, right? That's like the. <laughs> I love it. The badass angels in the world. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. There are. I mean, I believe in angels. And an angel can be in the form of, you know, an angel who has gone before us. Right. Or your angel sister friend. Okay. Yeah. You know? yeah. Um, so the angel class, I love angels. I love angels. I believe in angels. I think um, angels are amazing. Yeah. They are beautiful. They bring wonderful things into our life. So I like making angels. Mm -hmm. um, so I have a series of angels that I'm doing one every month for the year. Mm -hmm. And I open up each creation uh, to learning, mm -hmm. to teach. So people can sign up Every month, each month you can choose, pick and choose whatever month that you want to create an angel with me and you can sign up or I do have the option to buy them all at a discounted rate and then every month you'll get a new angel to paint and I'm painting them on canvas so it will be a canvas creation lesson. Oh, nice. Um, and it's just going to be fun. <laughs> And there'll be all kinds of angels. Like I, Jan, the first angel was the angel of peace, which was December. Mm -hmm. So you, I'm not gonna give them all away, but <laughs> you will have angels that represent all kinds of wonderful things in your life that mm -hmm. you want to bring into your life and into the life of others. Yeah, yeah. No, that's beautiful. I um, so I I think it's important that people know it's a canvas class because some of you are ready, right? Some of you are watching this. You're ready to go from. Uh, in your journal, those two pages, the page spread to something bigger that hangs up on the wall because there really is a difference between working flat like this and working on something that eventually is going to hang on the wall. There's a different uh, energy that you pull from to when you're thinking about that. So for those of you who are feeling kind of like, oh, the art journaling is great. I've been doing it. Uh-huh you're probably ready for Canvas. So definitely uh, check out this class because, yeah, what better? Tiara's like a, a wonderful person to learn from because she's going to teach you how 
not only does she teach you technique, she teaches you how to let go of that that inner critic that like keeps us feeling like we aren't enough, we're not good enough. She helps you. She gives you strategies for that too, like how to get out of that eh, and just embrace your art and be free and just create whatever comes out. So I think people are going to enjoy that. Now you got to show us the circle, the circle jam that you're doing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Tell people about the jam. <laughs> all right. So the jam, I love that. First of all, that word just makes me happy. <laughs> because it's the journal about me. It's the jam. It's a circle like a record. <laughs> Yes. Oh, I never even put that part together. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, that just makes it even cooler. I never put that the whole record. That's the whole thing. thing. So, I love, love, love music. Okay. Mm -hmm. I grew up with records. I grew up with the circle. Mm -hmm. So this whole journal about me, the jam and the music and yes. That is the whole reason I came up with the jam. The <laughs> I love it even more now <laughs> because I never made that darn connection. Yes. Oh. yes. So the Embrace Your Art 2016 challenge is the journal about me. Oh, it's the jam. Every week throughout the year, I give a prompt on Fridays as well as a creative challenge. Mm. Um, and so far, I'm doing process videos. That is the plan, but I don't promise them every week. It might be step out photos, <laughs> um, but there'll be something that I share and share a part of my process as the pages that I've created. Right. Um, it's fun. It's magnificent. I mean, the work and the sharing and the Embrace Your Art daily group on Facebook mm. is simply amazing. Just watching the ladies create is so very fulfilling to me. Mm -hmm. um, and that they are learning more or embracing more about themselves and their art and their own personal history. Yeah. It's like the bonus. It's yeah. like this really yummy, wonderful bonus. Yeah. Awesome. And now, just so people know, that is actually free. So this, the, jour the, the journal about me process, the embrace your art. Um, this is something Tiara gives herself a creative challenge every year. And then she invites her community along for the ride. So this is her invitation for you to ride shotgun on her journey as she is doing these circle. Um, do you have any of them you can show us? I do, but I have to step away for That's two fine. seconds yeah, yeah. across the table. That's fine. That's fine. Yay. You guys, you want to see these circles. Trust me. Um, because it's one thing to say she's doing a journal that's a circle, uh, you want to see it. So I'm glad she's, she has them in arm's reach so she can show them. Okay, so I'm going to ask you a question on camera. Yes. <laughs> Uh-oh. Will this be viewable today? Um, it will be viewable uh, today, Wednesday. People will be able to see it Wednesday. It's going to load tonight. And people will be able to see it tomorrow on Wednesday. Okay, because I have my page for Friday. Uh-huh. And I was thinking, am I going to show it? <laughs> <laughs> so not today. Okay. Tomorrow people will be able to see it. Okay, so I'm going to show you the pages that I have created for the journal about me. Nice. So first mm -hmm. one was your name. Mm-hmm. Nice. And the creative challenge... I believe was gelato. Ah, okay. Then page two. Mm. That was a lie. <laughs> page one was not gelato. So I don't know what, I won't tell you what the challenge was. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That was funny. Page two. Oh, that was that your nickname? Yes. Okay. This is um, nicknames, and that is what my husband calls me. My nickname online that everyone knows me by is Classy Girl. Right. So 
after I did this, I thought, well, since I was with my community, I should have done Classy Girl, but Classy Girl is written on there. Yeah, okay, okay. And then we had words that describe us. Mm, nice. And I want to say this one actually was the gelatos one. <laughs> <laughs> one of them was the gelatos one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then... We have this one, which is this week's. Nice. Which is plastic. Well, the prompt was your favorite color, but the technique was plastic wrap. And you see? Oh, you see I see it. Yeah, I love that. Pattern when yeah. you use plastic wrap. Yeah. So, so Tiara, you said that you give a process video. So you actually record yourself making your uh, page, and then you share that with your community. Correct. Okay. Okay. Yes. Awesome. And I do have Fridays here, but I'm not going to share it. <laughs> you have to come and visit the blog on Friday. Yes. Uh, get this one. <laughs> get your butts over there. So I will make sure that people down in the description that you have all the many ways you can connect to TR. You absolutely want to follow her on Instagram because she shares pictures of her art and she shows um, things that she's doing. That's also where you can hear about her, her courses and all the many things that she's doing. Um, but also on Facebook. She's very active on Facebook. She's got several communities there that she runs and is a part of. So make sure you go and find her in these places. Um, so Tiara, as we close out, what advice would you give to new art journals? Like brand new, never bought an art supply. Don't, they just know, they see it, and they're like drawn to it. They want to do it, but they don't even know where to begin. Like what kind of advice would you give them? Number one, which is so opposite of what I said before, is to use what you have. <laughs> you really got to use what you have on hand. Mm -hmm. Meaning, you know, if you have done any form of art and you have anything, whether it be just colored pencils mm -hmm. or crayons in yeah. your house, you can get started with what you have. Yeah. Of course, if you don't have anything and you're drawn to it, then I would still say limit your supplies mm -hmm. and go with less expensive brands. Try things mm -hmm. out. Um, it's really great when you have a store like a uh, uh, Blick Art Supplies where they sell one single items so that if you see someone who is using ink tints or Caran d'Ache crayons or uh, ink tints pencils or the most expensive Copics or whatever, you can go buy one. Right. And then you can experiment with the one or two. You can buy just one or two, one to three colors and experiment and see if it's your thing. Do yeah. you love it? Yeah. So easy on the supplies. Experiment with just a couple yes. and just play. Yeah. Don't be afraid of your blank page. It's only a piece of paper. It's only a book. No one has to see it if you don't want them to. Scribble, play, let that inner five-year-old come out. Mm -hmm. Enjoy. Yeah. You know, I, I really wish I had had that, that second piece of advice, limit your supplies. Um, <laughs> because right now I feel overrun by supplies in my studio. And I'm actually like really starting to take note of what I use most often and what I like most often because quite honestly there are things I've had for five years that I've never I opened one time and never opened again there are even some things I have over on my de table right now that I bought because I saw somebody do it in a tutorial or a class mm -hmm. but I never actually did it I never opened the darn thing so I'm in a process of de-stashing so I wish I had had that advice of limit your supplies really truly yeah, if there's if there's one thing that I was like, oh, I wish I had known that from the beginning, it would be that. It would be star small. Done for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you all to limit your supplies, and maybe you will listen. But when you get into art, you know we're gonna you gotta go crazy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I mean, even yesterday, I was like, why do I have so many paintbrushes? There are like six paintbrushes that I use consistently, but I easily have. 30 paintbrushes, all different. And I'm like, but I always go to the same six, right? So it's that moment of just like, in my mind, I might need it one day, right? 
Okay, so I heard the statistic today, and it was about your clothes, but I thought, well, it's the same with your art supplies. Okay, what and is you it? You said that we wear 20% of our clothing 80% of the time. That's so true. <laughs> we need to get rid of it. It's That's the so same true. with your art supplies. I am sure that I use 20% of my art supplies. 80%. I am positive. Yeah. Yes. I might, I might have to post that on Instagram or something because that is so true. That is so true. Oh my goodness. So listen, two things before we go. One, we didn't see any angels. Can you show us some angels? Do you have any nearby? No. Oh. Oh. No, because guess what? You, I know you sold the first few that you made. I sold them all. Yeah. Okay. All from. Yeah, I don't think I have any angels. I was thinking, do I have any in my art books? No, because my angels are things that I create on canvas most mm -hmm. often. Mm -hmm. So I don't have, okay. Well, that's not necessarily true. Right. Now, this isn't the angel that I create in, in my class. I will show you this one angel that I recently created. Um, but other than this, I don't think I have any angels. Okay. But you, but, but for those of you watching, you can go to her Instagram feed and kind of look through sort of like that November, December time frame. She has some beautiful angels there that probably are on other people's walls right now, hanging beautifully. Yes. yes they are. Oh, nice. Yeah. So that is an, she's an angel. Yeah. I remember seeing her, um, recently, I think on your Instagram feed. So yeah, beautiful. Awesome. So, Tiara, uh, as we as we close out, I want to ask you: Is there anything else you want to say or share with us? Anything that you think might be um, helpful for any level of art journal or newbies, um, people who are seasoned, people who consider themselves experts, right? What anything else you want to share? The only thing that I would like to share is just to tell people again to enjoy the process, to play. Do not feel intimidated by where other artists are. Yeah. Don't compare yourself. Try to avoid that. Enjoy your art where you are. Yeah. Say kind words. Speak kind words to yourself when you speak to yourself about your art. Yeah. We can all use that one because we all get into a place of comparison. We all get into a place of she's better than me or oh i wish i could be that good even people who have beautiful art probably look at someone else's art and think gosh i wish i could do that yeah. you could save yourself a lot of heartache and a lot of pain if you just are good to you enjoy your own process yeah. enjoy your own art love yourself be kind to yourself yeah, absolutely. Wow. There's no better way for us to close out this conversation because self-compassion is so important in the creative process. I don't care if you're an art journaler, a writer, a musician, a dancer, um, whatever it is you're doing for your creative outlet, having compassion for yourself is so important. So TR, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing this time with us. Um, I can't wait to see what comes when I start to make faces uh, with you. And uh, cause that's, that's like one of my moments of like a lot of angst around trying to make a face. Cause the first time I tried to learn, eh, right. I didn't really. So we'll see. I'm, I'm hoping to open up and enjoy my process. Enjoy where I am, all the things you just said. So thank you for saying that. Cause it's so important to remind ourselves. So thank you again. Um, and I look forward, maybe we'll, we'll chat again, maybe, you know, we'll catch up with you again, maybe either halfway through the year or at the end of the year and kind of see where you are and what you got planned for, uh, for next year for people. Right. So thank you. Thank you. All right.